Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started working with Oracle Live SQL. What I'd like you to do for this tutorial, though, is first to download these two .sql files. These are SQL scripts that I have posted on the Canvas site. These will help you to um, make sure that you are running Live SQL in the proper way. So after you have downloaded those, then continue on with this video tutorial. To access Live SQL, you can go to livesql.oracle.com in any web browser. I recommend Chrome or Firefox. In order to use Live SQL, you will need to be signed in with an Oracle account. In the upper right corner of the Live SQL homepage, there's the sign in button. If you haven't created an Oracle account yet, click on create account. Oracle accounts are free and you can use your St. Thomas email. Once you're done creating an Oracle account, come back to the Live SQL website and sign in. In Live SQL, you have several options on the left. The basic options you'll need to be successful in the 630 course are the SQL worksheet, and that is where you can actually type SQL language. but we don't want to use that just yet until we do some setup options. In this class, when we start using SQL, you're going to need to import some data into your Live SQL database before you can write some SQL select statements to work with that data. And in order to do that, you'll need to use the scripts that I provide. So another area that you'll need to use in Live SQL on the left is this area called My Scripts. Go ahead and click on that now. If this is your first time using Live SQL, you won't have any scripts saved in your Live SQL account. I'll show you how to use um, scripts in Live SQL by uploading those test scripts that you downloaded from the Canvas site just a minute ago. In the My Scripts page, there is a button in the upper right that says Upload Script. Click on that, and that will give you a pop-up menu and you can choose a script to upload, a .sql file to upload. So in the file area, if you click there, um, it will let you browse out and find wherever you saved those um, Oracle Test 1 and Oracle Test 2 scripts from Canvas and open them up, or excuse me, open one up, uh, do the Test 1 script first. When you upload a script in Live SQL, it makes you give it a name and I usually just name it the same thing that the file was named. So here I'll name it Oracle Test 1. And it also forces you to do a description. And it doesn't matter what you type in the description. So I will type here something like, this script helps me test that I can work with Live SQL. Or when I'm in a hurry, I just put a few letters in there because it does require you to input a description, but it doesn't matter what you put. The next step will be to click on the Upload Script button. And then it should give you a confirmation that you have uploaded the script to your account, but it doesn't actually run it. So it's really important that you remember that there's two steps when you're working with scripts. One is to upload it to your account, and then you have to actually run it. So once you have a script open in Live SQL, in the upper right, you can click the option that says run script. And if everything worked correctly, you should get a success message saying that two statements ran successfully and four objects were created. So what this test script did was create some test tables in your database or in your schema. Go ahead and close out of this confirmation message. And the third area I wanted to show you that you'll use in Live SQL is the schema page. When you go to the schema page, you'll be able to see what tables you have in your database. So before, uh, when I guess we didn't look at this before, but when you first log in to Live SQL, your schema will be empty. But after you run that test script, you should have two tables in there, test table one and test table two. Once you have tables in your schema, then you can start using your SQL worksheet to write SQL select statements. 
one thing I did want to point out about uh, the SQL worksheet, a few things. Uh, one, to run your statements after you've written them, uh, you can click the run button. And in this test uh, table, there is no data yet. So no matter what you run, it's gonna say no data found. Um, you can run your statements by clicking the run button or by using control plus enter. You might wanna remember that for later. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is that saving your scripts is very buggy and finicky in Live SQL. So I highly, highly recommend that if you use the Live SQL website to write your SQL, that when you want to save it, instead of using the save options within the website, that you copy everything and paste it into a notepad or notepad plus plus file. Um, when you put something in notepad or notepad plus plus, then when you go to save it, you will want to make sure that you save it as a .sql file. Okay, um, now we're going to run one other test. If you go back to my scripts, we'll just review how to do scripts again. Click on upload script. This time we're going to choose the Oracle Test 2 script. And doesn't matter for the description. Again, just a reminder that after you upload a script, you're not done. You have to also run that script. Go ahead and click on Run Script. And the second time you run a script, it's going to give you this uh, warning asking you if running this script you want to first drop everything that you already have in your database. Usually you're not going to want to check these boxes because you don't want to overwrite the work you've already done since you logged in. So I'll go ahead and just click perform action. And that was a success. This second script actually drops or deletes those tables that we created. So to double check that that worked, if we go back to our schema, it should now be empty. Something else I want to tell you about the schema is that it is not persistent. When you log out or if your session times out, you will lose the tables that you created. Your scripts are permanent, but your schema is not. So if you want to save your work, you'll need to save it into a script. That's basically what you'll need. I will um, show you around and do some examples while we were in module six of the class. Enjoy.